Good morning or good afternoon. I don't know where you are. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? If I may, uh, I would like to offer a few opening remarks. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the open-ended intergovernmental working group in the framework of the global reflection on the listing mechanism of the 2003 Convention. I would like to start by extending a warm thanks to each and every one of you for logging on from different parts of the world. I know that some of you have gotten up early and others are staying up late to participate and that everyone is juggling different responsibilities at work and at home. We have all been affected by the pandemic in one way or another and I would like to acknowledge and thank you for your commitment to come together to continue to move the 2003 Convention forward during this challenging time. I would also like to thank the Government of Japan for financially supporting the reflection process and allowing this open-ended intergovernmental working group to be convened. As you know, the pandemic has reminded us of the importance of culture and particularly intangible cultural heritage to our collective and individual well-being. In this regard, I am pleased to announce that UNESCO has recently published a report called Living Heritage in the Face of COVID-19 Pandemic, which provides a set of specific recommendations for post-pandemic recovery plans and underscores how communities have turned to their living heritage as a source of solace and resilience during the pandemic. The listing system of the 2003 Convention is an important tool that allows us to safeguard this living heritage, to raise awareness of its importance and to celebrate its diversity. Over 12 years of implementation, the list of the Convention have grown considerably, with numerous interesting examples of intangible cultural heritage submitted by a large number of state parties. As Umberto Eco once put, in, put it, when we create lists, our hope is to make infinity comprehensive. The ways the list of the Convention have come to be appreciated illustrates how intangible cultural heritage manifests in our lives and how living heritage is perceived and valued around the world. But the success of the 2003 Convention is not without the ch its challenges. We have come across numerous difficulties, many of which are interrelated, technical and recurrent. These complex challenges have affected all stakeholders of the Convention and we must treat them with the most uh, seriousness. That is why the Committee of the Convention launched a multi-year reflection to find lasting solutions to these challenges. The reflection process has already undergone an extensive consultation with experts through a comprehensive online survey and a Category 4 meeting. I would like to thank the experts for their time and for generously sharing this, their experience to lay the groundwork for this intergovernmental meeting. While the recommendations to the open-ended working group are broad, the experts are united in calling for the need to make the Convention's listing system more directly accessible to the communities around the world whose living heritage is the focus of our effort. I hope that the reform system will be able to respond to this call. It is the collective responsibility of the State Party of the Convention and of UNESCO to look after this normative instrument. The Convention must be implemented in such a way as to continue to evolve to respond to the needs of these stakeholders. Just as living heritage continues to evolve and develop in response to society and the environment, so the implementation of the Convention must also be dynamic and adaptive, rather than immutable and frozen through time. With this spirit of innovation and ongoing improvement, I am certain that this working group will play a crucial role in shaping the future we all want for the 2003 Convention for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage. I urge each state to be a con as concrete as possible during the discussion and to propose solutions and approaches that will address both technical details and big picture issues. The future of the 2003 Convention is in your hands. Thank you again for your participation. I look forward to the result of your deliberation 
and wish you a fruitful discussion. Before moving on the election of the Bureau of this working group, I would like to ask the Secretary of the Convention, Mr. Curtis, to provide some practical information. Thank you, ADG, and allow me also to welcome all of you to this meeting of the Open-Ended Intergovernmental Working Group. Um, before starting the session, I would just like to inform you that uh, working languages of this uh, Open-Ended Intergovernmental Working Group are those of the committee, namely English and French. Simultaneous interpretation is therefore provided in those two languages. The working documents have been made online uh, in English and French on the dedicated web page of the Convention about the global reflection, and they have been there since 28th of June, 2021. They are available to be downloaded from the web page uh, on the page dedicated to the global uh, reflection, and the uh, web address is on your screen. For the technical set of this meeting, I would like you to refer to the general information document that has been a that is also available on the web page. I'm also pleased to be able to announce that the new version of the basic text of the 2003 Convention are available also through the web page of the Convention in both English and French, with other linguistic versions to follow very shortly. This version reflects the amendments adopted by the eighth session of the General Assembly of States Parties, which was held in September of last year. This is an online meeting that is operated through the Zoom platform. In, and so in order to take the floor, you will need to connect to the session using an active meeting link. As indicated in the invitation letter, the maximum number of online active participants who may take the floor is 500. And given that there are 100 states parties, what, sorry, there are 180 states parties to the convention, each state party may receive two active connections. The ICH NGO Forum's representative, as well as Category 2 centers in the field of intangible cultural heritage, have also received active connections. And additional connections may be provided upon request subject to availability. So if you do require an active connection, please make sure that you are registered through our online registration form on the website of the 2003 convention and kindly send us a request by using the email address as indicated on the screen, ichmeetings at unesco.org. The debates of the meeting will be trans are being transmitted by webcast through the webpage of the convention in their original languages as well as in their interpretation into either English or French. And the recordings of the discussions held during the meeting will also be made public through the webpage of the convention as soon as they are available. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, in order to request the floor, we ask you to please press the raise hand button, which will display a blue hand beside the participant's name. This button can be found when you click the icon called reactions. And I've been told that there's been a slight change to the Zoom platform, so please be aware. Please look for it under the icon called reactions. The secretariat will be using the chat function to communicate general technical information. However, participants are kindly requested to refrain from using it during the sessions, except when you wish to signal a point of order. In this case, the participant should raise their hand to indicate that they wish to speak and type point of order in the chat box. The working group, both for parts one and part two, will be adopting a set of recommendations based on a draft. Only states parties can propose amendments. We would like to request not to use the chat box for sending any amendments. And as usual, please send amendments by email to the address uh, on the screen, ichamendments at unesco.org. When doing so, kindly indicate the name of your country. Thank you, ADG. Thank you, Tim. Um, now, the first order of business of this working group is to elect the members of the Bureau, starting with your chairperson. Are there any proposals for the chairperson of this working group? Uh, uh, there is Indonesia who is asking the floor. Okay. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you for giving us the floor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, in this year, on behalf uh, the ASPAC, on behalf of the, uh, of the uh, ASPAC group, we wish to nominate um, His Excellency Ambassador Asuyuki Oike, Ambassador Permanent Delegate of Japan to UNESCO, uh, to be the chair of this um, open ended uh, working group. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I ask if there is any delegation that would support this proposal. Djibouti is asking the floor, yes? Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Bonjour. Bonjour. Est-ce qu'on m'entend? On vous entend très bien. Très bien. Bonjour, monsieur le directeur. Merci de me m'accorder la parole. Euh, la délégation de la République de Djibouti soutient euh, la proposition de la délégation d'Indonésie euh, d'élire euh, président euh, le Japon. Le Japon, euh, que la délégation de Djibouti estime euh, qu'elle fait euh, beaucoup de bien à cette convention et on connaît euh, l'engagement de, de, de ce pays euh, en faveur de notre belle convention de 2003. Merci, monsieur le directeur. Merci. Uh, I don't see any other hand. So, can we now agree by acclamation that Her Excellency Ambassador Atsuyuki Oike from Japan will serve as chairperson of this working group? Very well. Don't. Congratulations. Can I ask Ambassador Oike? to join us and to take the chairperson place on the podium. Your Excellency, you have my best wishes for success in this task. Please. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. And uh, Mr. Ediji, thank you very much for all the efforts that you have been making for this convention. Excellencies, ambassadors. Is this working? That's okay. Okay. Uh, Excellencies, ambassadors, esteemed experts. Uh, first of all, let me thank you for honoring me with your trust as chairperson of this open-ended working group, open-ended intergovernmental working group. It is my sincere intention to conduct its business in order to achieve concrete and constructive proposals. Uh, by the way, as Mr. ADG said earlier, our uh, intangible heritage is very close to our mind. So I'm very grateful that you have given me this opportunity. Once again, thank you very much. We now have to fill the position of vice chairpersons in the bureau, who will be asked to replace me at the podium if I am unavailable at any time. As you may have read in the working group documents, the proposal is that the open-ended working group should elect a team of vice chairpersons, one from each electoral group, uh, who will also uh, double as Rapporteurs. The Bureau members of this working group will meet online with the Secretariat on Friday afternoon to review the progress of the meeting and to oversee the preparation of the draft recommendations of part one of our meeting to be presented towards uh, the end of the second day, I mean tomorrow. The same bureau will work together during part two of the meeting in September to prepare the draft recommendations of the working group. I'm confident that this approach should help us avoid lengthy discussion on the exact wording or punctuation and allow us instead to focus 
on the main points of substance. May I suggest that we proceed to the election of the vice chairpersons? I understand that the bureau members of the 16th session of the committee has undertaken consultations within their respective group and there are, they are ready with proposals. So, electoral group one, Sweden, are you ready to propose? Yes, Mr. Chair, we are. And thank you. Yes, please. Thank you for, for giving me the floor and good morning uh, to all their colleagues. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, we're very happy to, to see you all. And also congratulations on your election, Mr. Chair. Uh, Sweden would like to nominate to Germany for the position of uh, vice chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let me proceed to electoral group two. Uh, what about uh, your group, Slovakia, please? Bonjour, Monsieur President, et toutes nos félicitations pour votre élection. La Slovaquie propose la Pologne. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, electoral group three, Brazil, uh, please go ahead. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, bonjour. Uh, félicitations uh, pour votre élection. Uh, bonjour à tous, chers collègues. Uh, le Brésil uh, souhaiterait uh, présenter le Pérou pour la vice-présidence uh, du Grelac. Uh, merci. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Group 4, as I said, I'm representing this group as chairperson. So let me move to uh, Electoral Group 5A. Deputy, Deputy, please. Deputy, please. And by, by the way, thank you very much for your support for my chairmanship. Djibouti, please. Vous m'entendez? Est-ce qu'on m'entend? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Alors, la délégation de Djibouti pré euh, présente euh, au poste de vice-présidence la Côte d'Ivoire. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let me go to electoral group 5B, 5, uh, sorry, 5B, Saudi Arabia. Do you have a proposal, please? Good morning, Your Excellency. Uh, I would like to congratulate you on your chairmanship and uh, wishing you and all of us the best of luck today and tomorrow. Uh, Saudi Arabia would like to, uh, uh, to propose the name of uh, Dr. Adam Al-Mullah, His Excellency, the ambassador of the state of Kuwait. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Your, Your Royal Highness. Now, I'm glad that Bureau of the Working Group has been established smoothly, and thank you all for your cooperation. Uh, dear Bureau members, congratulations and welcome. I look forward to working closely together with each of you. Our first meeting will take place during the first break immediately after this session. I understand that the Secretariat will announce how to convene the Bureau meeting since we will meet online. The Bureau is a coordination meeting and for the sake of expediency, it will not be open to public. Uh, thank you very much for your understanding on this point. Now, I would like to invite the chairperson of the 16th session of the committee, Mr. Uh, Puntini, uh, Puntini Lame, uh, Migas Witt. I'm sorry if my pronunciation is not accurate. I I'm sorry, sir. But uh, I would uh, like to welcome the, direct, uh, the Secretary General of National Commissions of Sri Lanka to take the floor since the results of this working group will be presented when the committee meets in Colombo, Sri Lanka from 13th to the 18th of December this year. Mr. Secretary General, you have the floor, sir. Yes, 
thank you very much. Uh, actually, my name is Dr. Puichi Nilame Migas Watte. Okay, and welcome to all of you all. Good afternoon from Sri Lanka. And uh, good morning and good evening to you all who are participating from the different time zone. Uh, it is my pleasure to address you and to say a few words as the chair of the upcoming 16th session of the ICH committee to be held in Sri Lanka from 13 to 18 December 21. We are eagerly waiting to welcome you all to the salubrious climes of sunny Sri Lanka at the end of the year 21, by which time and hopefully our country will be almost fully vaccinated, thus allowing free movements of people, which could become a reality with the blessings of the Almighty. Preparations are already on the way to host this intergovernmental meeting to which a good majority of the representatives from the participating countries will hopefully be able to attend. In due course, we will be sending out the invitations to the member states in collaboration with the UNESCO Secretariat, setting out all details concerning travel and participation, including the agenda details. As you understand, today and tomorrow, that is 8th and 9th July 21, as also 9th and 10th September 21, there shall be open-ended discussions on the listing mechanisms pertaining to the ICH Convention, which was approved by the Member States of UNESCO 18 years ago in 2003. These discussions will enable more comprehensive ideas and proposals to be further discussed at the 16th session of the ICH Committee to be held from 13 to 18 December this year, 21 at which Sri Lanka will carry the mantle of being the proud host of the meeting, thus providing ample opportunities for members to come up with comprehensive proposals. Concerning listing mechanisms to be submitted thereafter to the UNESCO General Assembly in 2022. In the meantime, we will need to have much reflections on the threefold listing mechanisms comprising of number one the representative list number two the ICH list requiring urgent safeguarding and number three the register of good safeguarding practices it may also be the views of many that these mechanisms must be viewed holistically since they are interlinked and cannot be considered in isolation therefore it is deemed useful to have an overall approach to the listing mechanisms and covering issues related to the criteria for inscription, issues related to the follow-up of the inscriptions and the methods of evaluating the nominations to enable a comprehensive framework of action in safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity, which are numerous and are indeed very challenging task. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to le leave you with these thoughts and wish you the very best in the deliberation. Once again, we look forward to welcoming you all in Sri Lanka in December 21, hoping that better times will be ahead for us all. Please stay safe, stay well, and Peruan Saranai, I Boan. We are waiting to welcome all of you all into this warm weather and warm welcome to all of you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary General, for your very kind words and also for your very kind welcome and invitation to your beautiful country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. We are all looking forward to meeting you at the end of this year. Thank you. Now, before moving on to the next item on the agenda, I give the floor to the Secretary of the Convention to review our agenda and timetable. Mr. Curtis, the floor is yours.
Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, I would like to refer you and uh, the participants to working document one uh, concerning the agenda and timetable of this meeting and now you will be seeing the part concerning Thursday today. Uh, firstly, there will be four sessions of 90 minutes each day uh, and to allow a break of 30 minutes between the sessions uh, and one hour at lunch. So using Paris time as an indication, the morning sessions will be held from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then again from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The afternoon sessions will be held from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. and then again from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And there are three main items on your agenda. Item two is about taking stock of the background to this meeting and in particular the reasons for undertaking the reflection the progress that has been made so far in the reflection process and the objectives of this meeting. Working document 2, LHE slash 21 slash 16.com WG slash 2 corresponds to this item. Item 3 focuses on the outcomes of the Category 6 expert meeting which prepared the basis for this working group. Here a short presentation will be made on the main possible approaches identified through the expert meeting and three moderators of the breakout groups of the meeting will provide commentaries on the recommendations of the experts. The report of the, ex of the expert meeting, LHE slash 21 slash EXP slash 7, corresponds to this item. And then item 4 is, is divided into sub-items following the reflection themes. You will be invited first to discuss the overall approach under 4A, to be taken to reform the listing system before going through each of the three more technical reflection points, namely 4B on issues related to inscription criteria, 4C on issues related to the follow-up of inscribed elements, and 4D on the methodology for the evaluation of nominations. At the end of the item, the working group will return to 4A to agree to recommend a specific approach that could guide the reform of the listing system. The working document 3, LHE slash 21 slash 16 com WG slash 3 is the document that corresponds to this item. The adoption of recommendations of part one of the working group will conclude the two days meetings. And as your chairperson has mentioned a short while ago, the bureau of the meeting will oversee the recommendations with the support of the secretariat and two full sessions of the working group are foreseen at the end of tomorrow to examine uh, the drafted recommendations and adopt them should you wish. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Are there any comments or questions about the provisional timetable? Palestine, time, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like first to uh, congratulate you for sharing this meeting. Of course, we are in a, uh, very good hands. Uh, J'ai une question, uh, Mr. Curtis. Uh, simplement, dans le l'ordre du jour, je suppose que dans le le, le point suivi uh, des éléments uh, inscrits, uh, c'est là où uh, on va parler à ce moment-là uh, du transfert des éléments d'une liste à l'autre, ou bien le euh, delisting. Euh, Est-ce que c'est bien ça Simplement, c'est ça ma question. Merci bien. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Ambassador Munio, and thank you for your very kind words. Now, uh, Mr. Secretary, would you like to reply uh, Yes, oui, oui, juste pour confirmer que euh, l'honorable délégué de la Palestine a très bien compris que c'est effectivement uh, sous, sous le follow-up of inscribed elements, le suivi des éléments après inscription, uh, que les questions concernant le transfert et l'éventuel delisting, l'enlèvement d'un élément seront discutées. Merci. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions, please? No more? 
Okay, Côte d'Ivoire, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je vous félicite pour votre élection. Nous sommes sûrs que les travaux seront menés de manière euh, très bonne. Et je voulais poser la question au secrétaire de la Convention pour savoir euh, si, euh, pour la pause, la réunion du bureau utilisera le même lien. C'est une, une question technique, Monsieur le Président. OK, Mr. Curtis. Yeah, he's going to announce it later, but uh, yeah, well, okay. He's going to explain this at a later stage. Yeah, well, he's telling me that the answer is yes, but he's going to give more details later. Uh, thank you very much. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay, uh, for the time being, I don't see any hand raised. So we have a good bit to accomplish during a short time. So I will, uh, once again, I would like to say to all of you that I will depend upon your cooperation in keeping your remarks concise and pertinent. May I suggest two minutes maximum as a speaking time for each intervention. Well, I know I have chaired other meetings in the past and I know this is not easy, but for the sake of efficient discussions, uh, please keep your remarks maximum to two minutes. Uh, thank you for your understanding. And also I'm told the timer is available, so you will not, I, I will not, I'm sorry to say this, I have said this many times before, but I will not hesitate uh, to use it uh, if necessary. Thank you once again for your understanding. So it seems that everything is clear and we are ready to start our business today. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now, we move on to item two, global reflection on the listing mechanisms of the 2003 convention uh, process to date and meeting objectives. This item is to set the context of our meeting by taking stock of the background to the global reflection that started in 2017. And what, should, what we should achieve together during this meeting. Now, Mr. Secretary, please tell us where we are uh, in this multi-year process so that everyone will be on the same page. Mr. Secretary, please. Thank you, Mr. Pers uh, Chairperson. Uh, thank you for giving me the floor. I'm, I'll try to explain as briefly as possible the, the, the road we have followed to get to, get to where we are. And I'll start by talking about the genesis of the open-ended working group. Indeed, the process of an overall reflection uh, goes back to 2017 when the committee expressed the need through its decision 12 come 14 for an overall reflection on the listing mechanisms after examining a request from Vietnam to transfer an element from the urgent safeguarding list to the representative list. And then in 2018, the committee formally launched the overall reflection and envisaged as part of this process a meeting of experts and an open-ended intergovernmental working group. It was on this occasion that the committee accepted the financial support from the government of Japan through a voluntary contribution. And here I refer to decisions 13COM6 and 13COM10. So the, how was this... Uh, reflection triggered, I'll just spend a few minutes exploring, in, exploring how this happened. In a nutshell, the reasons can be explained overall by a number of frustrations which were expressed by some stakeholders and problems 
which they, from which they were confronted concerning the listing mechanisms. Firstly, communities, groups, and where applicable individuals around the world have been reported to sometimes feel that the inscription had not always fully met their expectations in terms of actual safeguarding their living heritage. For example, the inscription process uh, is lengthy even for elements that are considered to be in need of urgent safeguarding, and in other cases, communities expressed feelings that after the initial boost of the inscription, there was not great uh, follow-up for their safeguarding their elements. From state parties, we heard more and more increasing pressure, and including from communities, to nominate more and more elements, while the annual ceiling for the number of files to be treated has been limited, and the system of prioritization, which was set up a few years ago, has become somewhat unsustainable. The evaluation body also has expressed wariness of the discrepancies between their recommendations and the decisions made by the committee. If so many recommendations are not necessarily respected, then they ask what the point of evaluating each file so rigorously is. And finally, us in the Secretariat, we've been facing an increasing workload merely for administering the listing mechanisms and thus limiting our broader mandated work on capacity building and safeguarding for sustainable development. More specifically, there have also been a set of recurrent issues. Why does, for example, why does Criterion R2 continue to be problematic? How can successful safeguarding efforts be recognized so that elements can be moved out of of the urgent safeguarding list? And if so, what would happen to them then? Is it really necessary that a whole nomination be prepared again every time by previous submitting states when new states join in the multinational file? What can be done when it becomes evident that an element is in, not in fact or no longer in conformity with Article 2 of the Convention and through that the core values of UNESCO? These technical and substantive questions are numerous and many of them are interrelated. And taken all together, there was a general feeling that some reflection and possible reform of the listing me uh, me systems has become a matter of urgency. And so, coming to the reflection themes for the purpose of the reflection processes, the issues raised on the reflection have been grouped into four main themes. Under part A, the overall approach to the listing mechanisms, Theme B, issues related to the inscription criteria. C theme C, issues related to the follow-up of inscribed elements. And theme D, the methodology for the evaluation of nominations. And these themes were discussed during the 14th session of the committee and since have been providing a structure to the process of reflection. They were used, for example, for designing the survey questions for experts. And this meeting is also structured around these four themes. I will not go into the details of each theme as they are extensively described in working document three and reference materials for the global reflection. Mr. Chair, if you'll allow me just to talk a bit about the timeline, uh, I'd like to remind that the original timeline of the reflection was presented to the 14th session of the committee in 2019. And this was an important session for the reflection since the committee gave insights on the directions for this global reflection. But in parallel, the global reflection had already led to some concrete outcomes, which were known as the early harvest in, this, in, that, in the, that decision. And this concerns specifically the inclusion of a dialogue process in the examination of nominations, which was formalized by the eighth session of the General Assembly in September last year, 2020. This process allows for dialogue between the evaluation body and the submitting states to clarify minor issues identified in the nomination files through a simple question and answer process. And then the 15th session of the committee was organized in, online in December last year. And the committee's discussion on the number of files that can be treated in 22 and 23 cycles became uh, quite a point of discussion as becomes more and more relevant for the reflection at hand. So the plan was to move into the, the initial plan was to move into the phase for experts consultation in the first part of 2020 but this was just at the time when the global pandemic uh, spread across the world and the plan had to be adjusted. So by adjust uh, we had to move to an online modality and uh, the first step was an online survey which took place between 26 
of March and 11th of April this year. And then we had a second step, which was the Category 6 expert meeting that was con con convened over six days, non-consecutive, in the month of May this year. And the conclusions of the expert meeting essentially laid the basis for the, for the discussion papers and the, or the papers of this open-ended intergovernmental working group. Once your work has been done, your recommendations will be transmitted to the 16th session of the committee, as we heard earlier, to be held in Colombo, Sri Lanka, from 13th of, to the 18th of December of this year. And then in turn, the committee may wish to propose uh, to the ninth session of the General Assembly of States Parties to be held in June of next year, 2022, uh, to propose to adopt certain amendments and the operational directives of the convention to reflect the results of the overall process. So for this meeting, and given the extensive nature of the recommendations made by the experts of the Category 6 meeting and their potential far-reaching implications, uh, it was felt that the meeting of the open-ended working group should be convened in two parts, and this is the first part, being today and tomorrow, which you will be asked to discuss the recommendations of the Category 6 expert meeting in order also primarily to give a general direction to take for the reform of the listing system of the convention. In that sense, I would like to once again refer you to the draft template for the recommendations of part one, which is included at the end of document three. You will then meet again for part two on 9th and 10th of September to discuss specific changes to be made in line with the general direction chosen in part one. In other words, the primary goal of part one meeting will be to reach a consensus on the overall approach for improving the listing systems. And I will summarize the main options identified by the experts under the next item. At the same time, it is important to respond to some specific requests made by the committee, and three of them in particular, as core requirements for this, uh, this process. They concern recurrent challenges related to criteria in R2, the need to set up specific procedures for removing or transferring elements from and between the lists, and also procedures for extending multinational nominations. A comprehensive list of these issues with the indication of the relevant committee decisions has been put together in the annex of document three. Mr. Chairperson, these are the main points that I wish to, to present to the working group. And I am, of course, as always, happy to answer any questions of a general nature about the reflection process. Uh, of course, as the working group turns to each item or sub-item, I may again present in some greater detail. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Curtis. I now open the floor. Does anybody wish to ask questions or make comments on the presentation? given by Mr. Curtis. The floor is open. Any questions or comments? I don't see any hands raised at this moment in time. So shall we proceed to the next item if you don't have any comments or questions at this point in time? Okay, well, I don't recognize any questions or comments at this moment, so let me now move on. Uh, we now move on to item three, outcome of the expert meeting. Uh, this is an important item for our meeting since it pro provides the basis, baseline for our discussions. As the Secretary described to us under the last item, the global reflection has already undergone an extensive consultation and we will now hear the main recommendations of experts. Mr. Secretary, the floor is yours to present this item. Thank you again, Mr. Chairperson, and again, uh... If you allow me, I'll just explain that the expert meeting was convened online using the Zoom platform, and it took place over six days in May 2021. They were non-consecutive, with a plenary session on the 7th of May, and then on the 26th and 
27th of May, the second part of the plenary session. In between, there were parallel breakout sessions uh, where groups of experts discussed in detail uh, the recommendations. There were 34 experts, participants, expert participants in the field of living heritage from all regions of the world and with specific exp expertise and experience on various aspects of the listing mechanisms of the 2003 convention. Furthermore, some 20 observer experts designated by states also followed the debates. All three groups were asked to discuss theme A as it concerns overall approaches to improve the functioning of the listing mechanisms. And then each group was also assigned one additional th theme, namely group one discussed theme B, inscription criteria, group two, theme C, follow up of inscribed elements, and group three, theme D, methodology for the evaluation of nominations. As the purpose of the expert consultation was not necessarily for the experts to reach consensus on every point of the reflection, it follows, of course, that overall, the suggestions and proposals considered by experts do not necessarily form conclusive or necessarily cohesive uh, solutions. Their positions, nevertheless, could be categorized broadly into four approaches, which the Secretariat summarized as follows. The fine-tune A, the, what we call the fine-tuning approach, which stresses the benefits of the current listing system, considering that improvements can be achieved with a set of minor adjustments, for example, by rewording criteria and revising the forms and clarifying certain procedures. We then saw what we call the repositioning approach, which advocates for a more fundamental change to the listing mechanisms of the convention, striving to clarify the roles of the two lists and the register and to reposition them in relation to each other for a more open, inclusive, and fluid overall system. There was another group which we called the strict, stricter control approach, which seeks to make the listing system more rigorous with a more robust interpretation and application of the inscription criteria, considering that the current system is solid and that it is in line with the relevant provisions of the convention. And finally, another group which we have called the maximum inclusivity approach, which would allow for a dramatically higher number of inscription on the lists, including on the urgent safeguarding lists, and we are talking about thousands of elements per year on this approach, by mobilizing web-based platforms and electronically supported interactions. At the quick show of hands at the end of the meeting uh, of expert meetings showed a, an exact equal balance of experts between the fine tuning and repositioning approaches. The, what we have called the stricter control and the maximum inclusivity approaches were supported by a small number of experts, one or two usually only. And therefore, we, we are now focusing on the other two. But it is important to bear in mind that these categories are conceptual and not necessarily mutually distinct. And it was not always possible to clearly categorize the proposals between fine tuning and repositioning since some fall, of course, in both categories. And some experts, or many experts, seem to have supported a mix of the proposals under both approaches. So the report of the Category 6 expert meeting has been made available to this group, to this working group, and I would like you to refer in particular to the three breakout groups report that are included therein. Um, and the, the main proposals made by the experts were summarized by the Secretariat in a working document three for this working group. If I may, Mr. Chairperson, the Secretariat considers it important for the working group to also hear directly the comments by the representatives of the experts who participated in the, in the Category 6 meeting, and in particular the moderators each, of each of the three breakout groups who also moderated the technical sessions of the meeting have kindly made themselves available to share briefly their thoughts and the highlights of their work. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, for your presentation. It is indeed a very good idea for us to have an opportunity to hear directly uh, from the representatives of experts who so kindly prepared the content of this meeting. Without further ado, I would like to invite the moderators of the expert meeting as suggested. From breakup group one, Mr. Mark Jacobs from Belgium, please take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson. 
Uh, dear colleagues, as the chairperson of Breakup Out Group One, I explicitly invite you uh, not only to focus on the interesting discussion document three towards the reformed listing system, but to also use the extended reports of the breakout groups that you can find via page six of the report EXP7. If you follow that path, you will discover a rich treasure, boxes full of good ideas, arguments, tools, and potential solutions. So please also use them the next two days. Uh, let me mention seven important points uh, from the reports of the breakout group one. First, there was a very strong call to develop the potential of Article 18 of the Convention well beyond attempts to fine tune or reposition the criteria of the register. The plea was to organize a new expert meeting. This is mentioned in point six of the discussion document, but not yet in the draft recommendations. So dear colleagues from the state parties, please be awake and do not forget to add it. A second point is to focus on the notion of urgency. Can you, sp can you still speak about urgent after 12, 20 or 25 years? The conclusion of our group was that we can no longer look away, but have to consider the time dimension of urgent. This is why you will hear proposals about fast tracks, follow up, and the need for limiting the presence on the in time on the urgent safeguarding list. The third point is that our group pleaded to uh, take the different alternatives serious, all four, not just two, and to combine useful two. Consider, for instance, the notion of more control. This can be interpreted as an emphasis that communities, groups, and individuals should be in control, deciding and consenting to what happens to their intangible cultural heritage. This is not an outlier position. It is the very core of the convention. This is why prior sustained and informed consent should be reinforced, not weakened. A fourth point is, a fourth suggestion is to think outside the box. And uh, we should not downplay what is hiding under the flag, maximum inclusivity, and who can be against that. One can also to refer to this scenario as maximum connectivity, pooling resources, using modern web tools to connect and match those who express a need or a cry for help and assistance, and those who have solutions and resources to offer. So our group proposed to consider web-based solutions to move far beyond the bottleneck that now exists for Article 17 and for using the funds. So please take that serious. The fifth point is that we have formulated the whole series of proposals and alternatives for the criteria of the different lists. And if you're interested, please mobilize our work from the treasure trove of our report. The sixth point, and I'm nearly finishing, is to reconsider the ceiling tool. And it's, uh, according to us, urgent to disconnect the procedures of the lists, the register, and the request for international assistance. And this can be done, for instance, by introducing web platforms and other internet tools. And the seventh and last point is the suggestion to make more use of the potential of accredited NGOs, category two centers, UNESCO chairs, and resource institutes, and to uh, share uh, responsibility and work. But this is probably what the next speaker will also emphasize and evoke. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jacobs, for your very clear presentation. Thank you very much. Now, floor goes to Ms. Alessandra Cummings from Barbados, who mm -hmm. moderated uh, Breakout Group 2. Uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for the invitation to address you all today. As moderator for group two, I've been asked to offer some brief commentary on the recently held expert meeting. And given that details of these sessions have been well reported in the documents already mentioned by my colleague, um, I don't feel it's necessary for me to rehearse all the details of our discourses. However, I do want to offer some reflections. And what we did arrive at, uh, though, was 
through a, a review and analysis of the approaches to the follow-up to the um, nominating, monitoring, and interaction between the lists, we did come to some basic conclusions which I think would be supportive across the board. In my reflections on the discussions of this group, in my view, they could be characterized as giving priority to addressing the shortfalls, both documented and perceived, regarding communities and communications. Indeed, what, might, what has been defined in some instances as technical dysfunctions in respect to the implementation of the ICH convention have, in our view, occurred as a result of the intellectual and even in some instances, the emotional disconnect between the convention, the committee, also in some instances between state parties and communities and practitioners that they are meant to serve. So this is an important point. If we're going to effectively address those issues, then what we really need to do is to artic articulate, better articulate and promote the fundamental principles upon which the performance of the convention should be based. A key part of the structural inadequacies which have been identified to date was that there was a need to recognize that while its form and procedures could be borrowed from the earlier World Heritage Convention, that some fundamental tensions existed between the fixity of the historic and the mutability of the living between the expectation of authenticity of the tangible and the authority of the experience of the intangible. These are, of course, in, in many instances, poles apart. And the significant oppositionality of the two positions needs to be better clarified for all parties. Much of our discourse during these meetings was punctuated by continual concern about the absences and sometimes even the silencing of the voices of those who should actually be at the center of the, this convention, the communities, as my colleague has already stressed. At the same time, for many of us, while the convention has achieved significant success and prominence amongst state parties who have espoused its ethos, there is nevertheless still room for improvement especially in communicating the effectiveness of the convention's work for the sharing and safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage. Group two, in fact, came up with some key strategies to address these issues, particularly developing participatory heritage management and monitoring processes. This, in our view, could also complement the official processes or procedures and address both the issues of communities and communication. Secure and um, secure to exchange on broader questions, shared experience, highlighting practices without being prescriptive on how safeguarding should be done. Firstly, the concept of an observatory of ICH safeguarding, otherwise expressed as an arm's length platform, could provide a vital channel for community input and engagement sharing of safeguarding practices and multi-stakeholder collaboration, acting as a clearinghouse for the communities, NGOs, organizations, indeed all stakeholders to the convention. Secondly, that UNESCO as a key agent for the upcoming international decade of indigenous languages could in fact broaden participation and activism in this cause by encouraging submitting states to also provide their nominations in local indigenous languages, thereby encouraging the involvement of the communities, groups, or individuals concerned. And these needed to be published online for broader access in various diasporas alongside the English and French versions, which are our official languages. This recommendation might serve as a practical tool to enhance the use of indigenous languages as well as providing better access to and broader participation in the listing systems for the communities concerned and other stakeholders um, advisedly. A good deal of our work on discussion around the procedural aspects of this 
this um, convention needed a closer examination of the foundation of many of the follow-up procedures, which remained impenetrable to, some, to many practitioners and pol policymakers both. Again, the issues which were addressed had largely developed or emerged as a result of methodological mismatches and miscommunications, which has had become embedded over the decade or more of the convention's operations. The intransigence of such processes and terminologies needed to be unpicked, unpacked, clarified and relaunched. And this forms the basis of our major considerations. And again, language and its interpretation or indeed misinterpretation played a large part in under, undermining the expected achievements of both the nomination and safeguarding processes, which we all espouse. Unnecessarily punitive language in the evaluative and decision-making process has sometimes led to a desire to disassociate, for example, from the urgent safeguarding list, while vague terminologies have not attracted popular support for the register of good safeguarding practices. Review, revise, and reconstruct seem to be the important mantra alongside communities and communications as stressed elsewhere. Finally, I want to point out that um, we did come to a, co a, a conclusion that there was, need to for, there was a need to highlight the importance of using gender neutral and inclusive language within the implementation of the convention and advise to avoid <clears throat> the utilization of such terms as gentlemen's agreement this would show respect for the gender equality and inclusiveness mainstreamed in the operational directives and support for its application within the overall framework for the 2003 convention, as well as more broadly at UNESCO and within the UN system. Finally, I'd like to mention that we also felt the importance of a need to convene a separate expert meeting on the involvement of these various actors in providing additional information to the evaluation body in one of our group's recommendations for you to consider. Thank you again. And I wish to take this opportunity to thank our members, our wonderful rapporteur, Anita Barvaibe, our secretariat support who were unrelenting in their um, guidance and our interpreters in helping us to achieve a rich and well-rounded debate, which you can review through the documentation of the experts meetings and which we now take pleasure in transmitting to the working group for its consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Ms. Cummings. Well, in fact, uh, you made our challenges very clear. Uh, there are lots of challenges uh, in this working group, and thank you very much for making issues very clear for us. Now, uh, let me invite Mr. Leon's key from Burkina Faso uh, from the great, uh, Breakup Group 3 to give his remarks. Please. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour tous. Merci de me donner la parole pour faire un peu le point de ce que le groupe O3 a eu à faire comme travail. Et disons que la plupart de certains points ont été déjà mentionnés. Et je sais que vous avez déjà lu nos rapports, mais j'invite quand même à les lire davantage pour pouvoir donc tirer plus de points parce que une lecture rapide et une lecture approfondie, ça nous aide beaucoup à mieux donc donner un avenir meilleur à notre convention. Donc, euh, comme euh, le secrétaire avait eu à le dire, et nous avons travaillé sur euh, les thèmes 1 et puis nous, c'est le groupe 3, nous avons travaillé spécifiquement sur les points 14 et point 15, c'est-à-dire la méthodologie. Pour euh, les thèmes généraux sur lesquels nous avons eu à travailler, il faut noter que nous avons mentionné que le système était beaucoup engorgé et il fallait essayer donc de désengorger pour un meilleur avenir de la convention. Et il fallait également éviter une politisation donc des mécanismes d'inscription parce que parfois ce n'est pas sur la qualité du dossier, mais il y a d'autres facteurs qui rentrent en compte. 
sur les systèmes à envisager pour les mécanismes, nous avons pensé qu'il était très, très important de simplifier, alléger la procédure pour pouvoir faciliter donc, les inscriptions et surtout recentrer les systèmes sur la sauvegarde parce que c'est un aspect qui est très, très important à notre avis. Et il fallait également instaurer un système alternatif et ainsi un nouveau système d'instruction avec des cycles alternatifs et en passant des listes représentatives, listes de sauvegarde urgente, ainsi de suite. Cela permettrait donc de pouvoir résoudre le problème de hiatus qu'il y a entre la liste de sauvegarde et la liste représentative et les autres mécanismes. Pour ce qui est de clos délimité, nous avons pensé qu'il est un peu difficile de donner une durée de vie à un élément sur la liste. Donc, c'était intéressant de ne pas avoir une durée limitée pour ce qui est des éléments. Également pour le plafonnement, on demande qu'il soit assez allégé et puis permettre un plafonnement séparé des candidatures à la liste représentative. Donc, voici ce que je pouvais noter rapidement pour ce qui est donc du thème global sur lequel chacun, dans, et chacun des groupes s'est apaisanté. Pour ce qui est du, du processus global et la méthodologie, et en ce qui concerne l'organe d'évaluation, nous avons pensé que et la composition comme telle, étant donné que c'est le produit d'un long processus euh, et de consultation, de concertation et autres, et l'organe d'évaluation méritait donc d'être maintenu comme tel actuellement. Mais il y a un aspect qui est très important qu'il faudrait qu'on tienne en compte spécifiquement pour les candidatures multinationales. Et ça qui a été un des points que nous avons eu à aborder. C'est-à-dire que lorsqu'on propose des candidatures, qu'on tient compte de la composition de l'organe d'évaluation, parce que si près de la moitié ou plus de la moitié de l'organe d'évaluation se retire et n'arrive pas à apprécier un dossier pour une question donc de crédibilité, et je pense que ça, c cela serait un peu dommageable. C'est pourquoi nous avons pensé donc qu'il faudrait que les candidatures multinationales tiennent compte de ces aspects. Le secrétariat a déjà mentionné dans les rapports présentés et la question du respect donc des recommandations, puisque certaines recommandations sont balayées pas balayer du revers de la main, mais plus ou moins sont revues sur la base d'informations apportées pendant la session. Et nous avons pensé que les gentlemen agreement qui avait été adopté, c'est quelque chose de très loin, et au mieux descendre davantage, aller au-delà, en deçà de trois critères pour pouvoir permettre de donner plus de poids et plus de confiance à l'organe d'évaluation qui fait un travail de fourni dans l'optique de mieux présenter les dossiers et de pouvoir donner plus de crédibilité à la Convention. Pour ce qui est des dossiers multinationaux spécifiquement, le groupe a apprécié donc le travail et la cohésion, la solidarité qu'il y a pour pouvoir représenter des dossiers, mais la crainte principale a été le fait de la constitution d'une communauté souvent qui est fictive, une communauté qui n'est pas une communauté de pratique en tant que telle, et le groupe a attiré l'attention donc pour voir dans quelle mesure et dans nos discussions, on pourrait donc tenir en compte cet aspect, faire en sorte que la communauté soit une communauté de pratique, mais pas une communauté faite juste pour pouvoir et notamment et, et permettre l'inscription d'un élément. Nous avons fait des options et des propositions des options et, et nous demandons et nous proposons également dans la mesure du possible que l'organe d'évaluation puisse utiliser des informations extérieures parce que jusqu'à là, tous les travaux qui sont faits, c'est sur la base des informations qui ne sont que dans les dossiers, qui ne sont pas souvent complets et qui ne permettent pas donc et, une appréciation et, 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 générale. Donc, euh, une, des une des propositions et serait donc de permettre et de prendre en compte des informations extérieures. Donc, euh, comme je le disais, nous invitons les uns et les autres à relire davantage les rapports où nous avons consigné l'ensemble, donc euh, la quintessence de nos gestions et les options que nous avons proposées. 
Donc, voici ce que je pouvais mentionner au nom donc, des travaux du groupe 3, tout en remerciant l'ensemble des experts qui, se sont, eh, qui ont été très, très disponibles, et également le secrétariat qui n'a pas manqué de nous accompagner pour que ce travail puisse donc se tenir dans d'agréables conditions. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Key. I think your presentation, presentation completed the picture that experts are suggesting. Uh, there have been a number of important issues mentioned in the presentation. And uh, I would uh, once again uh, thank all the three experts for giving us a very good basis for our discussion in this working group. Uh, thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard from the moderators and chairs of the various breakout groups of the expert meeting to prepare the ground for our deliberations. Uh, before opening the floor, I would like to ask the secretary if he would like to make any further comments on the process leading up to our meeting. Mr. Curtis, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, I, I just to, to remind and uh, also to, first of all, I'd like to thank also the, the, all the experts for the very hard work they performed and the very succinct uh, summaries we've heard because these are many and complex issues which have been presented very well. Um, the, just to underline that the expert meeting was preceded by an expert survey which was conducted in March and April this year and the survey uh, highlighted two main intentions uh, for, the, for the listing system. The first to be to make the nomination process better attuned to the realities and broader safeguarding intentions and practices of communities, groups, and individuals. And the second point that became very clear from the survey was the need to enhance the monitoring of the changing viability of inscribed elements and their safeguarding sta sta status. I think, as we've heard, these points correspond very well to the recommendations made by the Category 6 meeting, expert meeting. Um, but I'd also, also just again to remind, uh, remind and draw your attention to the, an issue which, was which has been discussed extensively both at the General Assembly last year and the Intergovernmental Committee last year, which concerns the number of files and the prioritization systems. It has become clear that on a purely, let's say, logistical matter, the listing mechanisms have become in some sense a victim of their own success and the prioritization system that has been set in place several years ago, uh, the, including the ceiling of the number of files to be treated, are, are really no longer compatible or sustainable in the current form. Um, of course, the experts took this into account, but their, their, uh, their mandate was not to address this issue specifically, but nevertheless, of course, this is an issue that, that will have to be kept in mind, I think, uh, in, in the discussions coming, so thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, uh, I will leave it at that. I will finish here. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Curtis. Now I will open the floor. Uh, does anybody wish to take the floor to ask questions about the expert, uh, expert consultation phase of this reflection? Uh, please feel free to ask questions to the expert now. Now is the only time when you can do it. So please ask questions, give comments to the experts, please. The Ambassador Adam of Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I would like to congratulate you for the chairing this important meeting, and I would like to uh, thank the experts for their great work and the Secretariat. I have a specific question for the group number three of the experts uh, through their you know, the nomination uh, that they discussed. Have they utilized the use of technology like I've seen in group number one, where, you know, uh, our, our expert Jacobs, where he said, you know, the use of technology, it can uh, uh, solve some of the issues. Uh, how about group number three? Did they explore that, the use of the technology, uh, specifically in group number three? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. 
Ki, would you like to respond to the question? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Et disons que nous n'avons pas abordé spécifiquement la question des technologies pour ce qui est de la méthodologie. Nous n'avons pas abordé cet aspect. Merci. Thank you very much. Now, any more questions, comments, please? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, Cuba, please. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer encore une fois et de pouvoir regarder que vous êtes justement dans la présidente de cette réunion très importante, surtout pour l'avenir de, de ces conventions. Et nous avons un doute, nous avons un, une préoccupation que vous voudrez partager avec les experts pour connaître un peu plus comment est-ce que c'est abordé la question de l'équilibre entre les nominations nationales et les nominations multi-pays. Multi Parce que de plus en plus, dans les derniers conseils, dans les derniers comités, nous avons l'impression qu'il y a eh, beaucoup de nominations multi-pays qui eh, permettent à un État membre de présenter eh, quelques, quelques nominations eh, et qui ne permet pas, c'est notre impression, assurer un équilibre entre les nominations nationales, que nous avons déjà en politique zéro, qui un État membre doit présenté en nomination en fois chaque douze années, mais ça c'est nous avons l'impression que l'objectif de améliorer la présentation des candidatures multinationales aujourd'hui c'est un peu désbalancé en comparaison dans ce autre moment et je voudrais savoir quelle est l'impression de les experts qui a participé si ça c'est un sujet au cours de la réflexion du groupe des experts. Merci Monsieur le Président et merci à tous les experts et tous les, les collègues qui sont aujourd'hui dans cette réunion. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I think the question has been addressed to all the experts. So, uh, would any of you uh, like to take the floor to respond to the question from Ambassador of Cuba? Uh, I could attempt a, a response if you want. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Ambassador. Bienvenido. I want to say that within our, our group, unfortunately, this was not a question raised um, within our group. What we did address, however, was that there was an issue where there was a need to give support to state parties who were not um, yet included in the um, in the list, and uh, and we discussed various mechanisms for doing that, for in, in, particularly in uh, ensuring exchanges of technical support and this sort of thing. But we did not examine the balance between national and multinational uh, uh, nominations. That wasn't a, an assigned task, and it didn't come up in our discourses. But um, we did see the the importance of providing support where where there was a relative underrepresentation of various state parties in general and indeed in various regions and that was part of the discussion and is reflected in our report thank you very much uh yeah uh for your question Thank you very much, uh, Madam Cummins. Uh, can I give the floor to Mr. Key, if I may? Eh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Excellence, pour la question. Et disons pour que ce qui est donc des candidatures multinationales, notamment la représentativité, eh, nous l'avons abordé dans notre groupe de travail. Et l'appréciation que nous avons eue, c'est que ça paraissait comme 
il y a un système pour pouvoir sauter les verrous de la limitation des candidatures. Et c'est pourquoi nous avons mis l'accent sur le fait que et il faut qu'on ait des communautés de pratiques et non des communautés virtuelles. Parce que souvent, on se dit tel élément, on l'a ici, on essaie de voir, de tirer pour voir comment est-ce que nous pouvons nous associer à d'autres communautés pour pouvoir présenter des éléments de candidature. Donc, si nous avons, et l'option que nous pensons, que c'est que si nous avons une communauté de pratiques, une communauté réelle, et ça pourrait limiter donc ces, ces candidatures qui sont créées pour pouvoir sauter les verrous de la, de la de limitation. Donc, c'est ce que nous pouvons être. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, would uh, Mr. Jacobs, would you like to intervene, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question. I think every chance we have for cooperation and uh, international uh, links uh, should be welcome. And in our group, we discussed several possibilities. That's why we propose to look at uh, web-supported forms of uh, matchmaking, and uh, this can also be used for international uh, nominations to explore the development of Article 18. There are a lot of possibilities for international collaborations that have not been mobilized yet, so that's why we plead to reconsider this. And the third element in our discussion, we've discussed about the international uh, nominations and we emphasize the importance to secure the consent of the communities and groups involved to, to pay attention to this and to uh, really focus on it. So thank you very much for the representative of Cuba. Any form of international collaboration and cooperation is highly welcomed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jacobs. Um, now, I would like to give the floor to Poland, please. Hello, uh, Ambassador Magda. Yes, I think of you course, my fault. So sorry, so sorry, <laughs> okay. Mr. Fair. Thank you so much. And uh, once again, uh, I would like to congratulate you on your election. And I'm looking forward to, to work with you uh, together again and uh, all the other members of the Bureau. As you know, Poland is very committed uh, to, to, to the ICH protection and to the convention. As a member of the committee, we were working uh, and uh, keeping fingers crossed for this uh, for this group to start working uh, when it comes to the uh, need of the review of the listing mechanism. Uh, we would like to thank a lot uh, all the experts uh, involved in the process of preparing the document and the secretariat uh, when it comes uh, to this in-depth analysis and uh, uh, necessity of uh, having this global reflection on the listing mechanism. And uh, I would like to also raise question uh, to the experts, uh, how in your uh, opinion, we can involve more communities practically in the system of the ICH protection. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, um, the question has been addressed, not necessarily to a particular expert, but uh, if, uh, you could take this course. Maybe, I'm sure that uh, all th three of you would uh, probably like to respond to the question. So can I this time s start uh, with uh, Mr. Jacobs, if you don't mind? Yes, sure, thank you very much for the question. So uh, one of the possibilities is offered by internet and web solutions, like the meeting we are having today. Uh, there can be uh, developments, including uh, groups and uh, communities. And one of the proposals that is mentioned in our report is to also look at the practice uh, cultivated in WIPO, where they have representatives of communities and groups participating in the meeting. And that was an explicit advice to uh, consult with WIPO and uh, learn from their experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Uh, and again, uh, if you don't mind, could I ask uh, Madam Cummings to take the floor to respond to the question? Uh, yes, thank you very much to our colleague from Poland, the representative of Poland for that question. Indeed, um, it would take me uh, too long perhaps to go through all of the various proposals that we made for better inclusion of communities. But I want to assure you that if you do review our reports, you will see a number of uh, suggestions that were made um, how to better include communities. One thing I want to stress is that we did find the disconnect between communities and the official languages of UNESCO to be an important point that needed to be addressed, largely internally in, in um, when the uh, state party was developing nominations. Of course, there are processes already identified for that, but we did feel that because uh, local languages or indigenous languages were not um, necessarily encouraged and not necessarily used, they weren't given equal parity um, when the when the nominations were being presented or indeed uh, finalized, and we did feel that that was an important um, mechanism by which uh, communities could be encouraged to participate. Another uh, another uh, proposal that we made was that um, we we would support the development of an online platform and or observation observatory, which enabled members of the community, NGOs, um, different specialized groups to, to better participate perhaps in that, both in the elaboration of nominations and in the follow-up to those nominations. Um, because it is they that have the knowledge, it is they that practice the ICH, and it is they that are able to conclude whether or not in a, um, an element is still valid or is in danger, endangered. And finally, um, the, the process of the involvement of um, uh, communities was stressed in particular in, uh, in terms of the need for better capacity building for a broader spread of um, uh, the tools of engagement and I think that um, we have the process, we have the possibility now um, through the online platforms, as was stated by my colleague, to, to make it easier for members of the community to participate and share their knowledge. Indeed, our proposal for um, a, a special uh, experts meeting on the involvement of um, new material or additional material to the nominations that are already presented is specifically geared towards enabling um, uh, literal or vocal or, or um, presentations about these nominations and not limit it to what is in fact written in the nomination and, and um, where some uh, members of the community don't necessarily have the, the capacity to write in the in the lingua franca of international organizations they most certainly do know their um their element and are able to speak um eloquently to the value of that material so i i would say those were three of the key points but there are many others that are embedded in the reports thank you very much for the question thank you very much now, could I invite Mr. Key, if you don't mind, to make some comments, reactions to the question? Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Je m'excuse, j'étais un peu discret parce que je préside actuellement l'organisation du BAC ici au Burkina Faso. Et, mais si j'ai bien compris, la question porte sur l'implication des communautés, c'est bien ça? Yes, I think it is. Okay. Voilà. L'engagement des communautés. Bon, disons que et lorsque nous avons abordé la première thématique, 
Et l'une des raisons pour laquelle nous avons pensé que ce n'était pas intéressant de donner une durée de vie aux éléments inscrits sur la liste représentative, c'était une stratégie et ça contribuerait à frustrer la communauté, à ne pas davantage impliquer la communauté dans la sauvegarde. Mais pour ce qui est de l'élaboration des candidatures, et notre groupe a pensé que c'était intéressant que les, form les formulaires soient soumis dans les langues pour pouvoir donc permettre aux communautés de mieux comprendre la question donc de la, de la sauvegarde, de mieux comprendre l'esprit et de savoir réellement que leur consentement est préalable, libre et éclairé, comme le chante un peu, et notamment la, et la convention. Donc, je m'excuse vraiment beaucoup. C'est ce que je peux donner comme élément assez rapide. Comme je l'ai dit, j'étais un peu perturbé parce qu'il y avait une situation que je devais gérer et déjà. Désolé si je n'ai pas pu répondre convenablement. Merci beaucoup. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us when you are very busy. You know, I, I would like to appreciate my, I, I would like to express my appreciation to you. Um, now, okay, now I. I don't see any hand raised at this moment in time. Um, can I solicit uh, more comments or questions from the floor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so can we just break or perhaps? Okay, uh, for the time being, I do not see any hand raised. So let me thank once again to the experts, all the experts, three experts who uh, have taken time to participate in this meeting. Uh, your presentations gave us a very, very good basis for our discussions ahead. Thank you very much to all of the three experts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now, we will ask uh, you know, Mr. Curtis to explain to us how we're going to have the first break. So he will explain how this first break be organized. This is essentially for the bureau meeting, but he will explain how this is going to be organized. Mr. Curtis, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. So as you know, according to our agenda and timetable, the meeting should now pause for 30 minutes and the bureau will meet privately. So may I ask that members of the bureau from Germany, Poland, Peru, Cote d'Ivoire, and Kuwait, to please stay connected to this meeting room during this pause. The Bureau meeting is private, as was mentioned, and for the sake of expediency, so all participants that are not members of the Bureau will be sent to a separate breakout room for 30 minutes. Please do not disconnect from Zoom while you are in the breakout room, because you will be automatically be brought back into the main meeting room promptly in half an hour, so that will be 11.40, since we are now uh, at 11.10. So, uh, so again, to explain, non-Bureau members will be put in a separate room for the next 30 minutes. The Bureau will continue on the same link and you will be brought back. However, if any of you have technical problems, please write to the Secretariat ICHmeetings at unesco.org. Uh, again, this arrangement only concerns this break and the next one when, tomorrow when the Bureau will be in session. Mm -hmm. uh, for all other breaks, the participants will not be moved to another virtual room, and I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.